Brad Bing, he's the managing director of Sporting Chance. Um, I, I would, I would argue that when local authorities, when provincial governments build schools and build housing, um, they often talk about space and the need for access to, to housing and, 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 and public facilities that all can, uh, that can be shared. I, I wonder how on the, how high on the agenda, Brad, is, is simply green open space for, for kids to play and if schools are, are being built sports fields also need to be maintained and green spaces being maintained there's also water and irrigation issues um, sports fields may not necessarily be high on the agenda based on the priorities that we already have in this country is it Lisa, um, first of all, um, education is our number one priority in South Africa, sport is secondly. So I think we've got to put that into context. But what we've got to understand is sport can be divided into two co- components. One is the sporting component, Lisa, and the mm. second one is the physical education component. Mm. Now, one of the things that uh, the current government did in 1999 was that they removed phys ed and what they call non-exam subjects out of the curriculum. So they took music out of the curriculum. They took needlework. They took um, phys ed out of the curriculum. And a lot of those subjects to focus on your kind of your academic subjects, your, uh, your mainstream academic subjects. And the, the ripple effect of that is what we're seeing at the moment is so many children not actually getting involved in physical activity and, hence, and then going from there to play sports. The, the concern I have with that is the fact that the schools that have got phys ed into the schools uh, that, that still continue with it, uh, Lester, you will see that their academic results are a hell of a lot higher and more substantial in the schools that don't have it. Mm. And, and, that is, that is, and that is what you're seeing coming out of uh, research being done by various institutions to find out how important phys ed and, and, and sport is into the schools. But to answer your question with regards to the facilities, Lester, very simple, the schools that are being built, there is no ground for those facilities, for those schools to have major facilities like you had in your former um, Model C schools as such. Mm. So the importance of a club structure and a club setup within that community is mm. absolutely vital. And we're not getting that right because... The, the people who are there, they, 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 they are running it, aren't getting paid a, a, a substantial amount to actually, people don't see sport as a vehicle where you can actually come out, lead a healthier lifestyle and make something of it to go further in life and actually earn an income from that. Mm. So I think there are a lot of components that, that need to be looked at. Yeah. I like the person who spoke before me. Um, just discussing, you know, we, we, we've got to have a clear strategy in South Africa, and we don't have a clear strategy, Lester. It's very simple. And once you've got that strategy, you can't have a structure put in place without what, knowing what the strategy is going to be. And the structures that we've got in place, I think, are very, are very basic and simple, and they do work. But the strategy is all wrong. And then the third component on top of that, once you've got the strategy and you've got your structure, you need the correct personnel. And people don't see sport as a as the, the sporting people as being people that should be paid a substantial fee to actually educate the next population. Mm. And that's where I've got a major problem with where South Africa is at the moment. Because mm. it is absolutely vital that we get the right people in the right place with in the right structure taking it forward. Mm. Because like like many Government services and infrastructure issues. Um, it is often the private sector, in your case, NGOs, um, civil society that, that has to step in. I know that you guys at Sporting Chance have been doing uh, a, a lot of work and keep getting young people active. There are other, organi- other organizations, like, for example, I think, uh, Cool Play also does training and coaching programs at, at, at school. When you go to a school where they aren't necessarily the best facilities, is maybe there's only just a dusty bowl where a where a a, a rolling field of, of grass should be. What is the response of of particularly young children wanting to be active, wanting to have an organised game of of football, whether it just be cones placed as as as, uh, as as goalposts, and you guys get a ball, you give them maybe some bibs. What is the response when you roll into a community and say, let's play some sport? The- Lester, you've hit the nail on the head there because the, the, 
South African children, I don't let anyone ever bluff anyone in this country. South African children, regardless of their affluent or poor or whatever background, are absolutely mad about sport. They want to play. The natural talent we've got in this country, Leslie, is just unbelievable. I could take you into Ocean View or Masi Pumalele. I could take you into KwaZulu, Natal, or Kwamashu, or Phoenix or something. It is unbelievable. So we turn up, we, obviously we don't just turn up to school. We, we, we attend the school and we put a start. We, we, we make sure that when we head to the school, the structure is in place and we've got the right personnel. But the big thing, and, and by the way, the, 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 the lack of facilities that these kids have is made up in the passion and enthusiasm they, that they have for wanting to learn. But what our big thing that we've been working on in the last decade, uh, Lester, is we try to twin schools. Now, we, when I say twin schools, I'll give you an example. There's a school that's opened up um, in Imhoff, in, in Komiki. I'm using that as an example because I've just been uh, dealing with them. And across the road is Ocean View Community. So one school has got absolutely beautiful facilities that are being underutilized for no other reason besides they've still got to fill the campus 100%. But across the road, you've got a school, that, like Plainburg Primary School, that is desperate for facilities. And what we've done is we've gone to both principals and we've brought them together to see if the children from Ocean View can go across the road and utilize the facilities at the school, literally 200 meters away. And the school facilities there are beautiful. And both headmasters, or principals, should I say, because the, the lady uh, principal at, um, at the school <clears throat> across the road from Imhoff is absolutely delighted that she can contribute towards making sure that the children of Ocean View can utilize her facilities. So that's the big thing for us. Um, the, the other thing that, that really uh, gets me down uh, less over the last 32 years is you'll find a lot of countries wanting to invest into uh, the national setup or the provincial setups because they know they're going to get a, an extremely high return on their investment mm. with regards to marketing and PR and publicity, etc. Now, I've been trying to fight for the last many years that a, a large percentage of that, or a percentage of that, should I say, should, if you want to invest at the top level, you've got to be compelled that part of your percentage investment into the top level goes into grassroots. Because otherwise, how do you sustain the, the program? Because it's unfair for people to invest at the, at the bottom, get no return besides to see a young a person come through the system. And when they get to the top, the, top, the person who's sponsoring the top gets all the accolades. That just doesn't make sense. Mm. And again, I, I reiterate when I say corporates just don't see the, the, the sport as a vehicle or mm. it as a vehicle for... Uh, the vehicle to uh, kind of institute life skills mm. education. And yet, that is such a powerful tool that we've got to use in this country to, prevent, mm. to, to bring our respective communities together and to literally level the playing field, Lester. Mm.